Dear Luis Trillo, we regret to inform you that you are not among those selected for admission nor a position on the alternate list for the 2017 entering class. Welcome back everybody, thank you guys so much for watching. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit that subscribe button before you guys leave. Today I'm gonna talk about my experience getting rejected from medical school about a year, almost two years ago now actually. Um, but first, congratulations to those that have already been accepted to medical school and those that were placed on wait lists or have been rejected from some of their schools. I know you guys are very antsy, very nervous right now. But I'm going to share my story so that you guys have hope. And if you guys do end up getting rejected, I want you guys to know that you guys can get in next year if you guys put in the work. And I'm going to give you guys some advice, I guess, based on my own experience. So I remember it clearly. I was sitting in a lecture hall for one of my Spanish courses. It was February 9th, and I got the email uh, probably like around 11 a.m. And I had gotten rejected from the only school that I applied to. I felt awful, but I kind of expected it because my GPA and MCAT weren't as competitive as I wanted them to be. My extracurriculars were incredible, but your GPA and MCAT are super important. And I got the rejection letter, and what did I do? What was I going to do? Medical school has always been plan A, never had a plan B. I don't know what I would do with my life if I, if I didn't get into medical school. So then what I did that same day, I headed to my school's pre-med advisor that I had not used for my application cycle the first time, which I really should have. If you guys have a pre-med advisor, definitely go make an appointment to go over your application, make an appointment with them, and have him help you with your med school application. They'll help you with your personal statement. They'll help you setting realistic expectations for schools to apply to based on your TPA and your MCAT and your extracurriculars and based on your own personal goals, really. So I headed up to my amazing pre-med advisor. Incredibly, he was a, the very first doctor I shadowed like three or four years ago in the hospital, pediatric hematologist, oncologist. And he was like, why didn't you come to me for your first application and I just didn't know it was a good resource to use and definitely go use it guys if you haven't tip number one of this video so then what did I do so my school offered an awesome exit interview so they tell me they're like your extracurriculars are awesome Aaron you are the kind of student we want in school with us but we're kind of worried because your GPA and MCAT aren't up to par and we need to make sure you can go through the rigors of medical school and it made sense. I kind of knew that. I kind of expected it. it still kind of hurt, but you have to set realistic expectations. With the help of my pre-med advisor, I knew I had to improve my GPA. In one semester of left of college, I had to retake the MCAT and get a better score, obviously. And my extracurriculars, I was just going to keep doing what I was doing. I loved where I was volunteering, and I was going to change that. So I only needed two courses to graduate. A Spanish class and a science class, like a 400 level science class, but I ended up taking an extra three upper level science courses that were awesome. They were super fun. I'm so glad I took them and I got A's in every single course. So I took a 500 level course that was genetic engineering of flies, basically using the CRISPR Cas9 system that's been blowing up everywhere recently. And then I took a really fun anatomy and physiology for medical practice that was super freaking hard. But like now I'm in medical school, it wasn't that bad. I took another science, another upper level science course, and then I took my other Spanish courses, and I got A's in every single course. It boosted my GPA, boom, from one semester. I increased it a ton. At this time, I had lost my job. The veterinary practice where I was working had been sold, and all the employees got laid off, so I had no job. And I got a job at a laboratory at a local hospital to be a lab technician. So I was processing specimens, doing C. diff tests, CBCs, D-dimers, Chem 7s, all those fancy tests you guys will learn about in medical school. I took all my MCAT books I bought, the Princeton Review, I took them with me. Every single moment I had, I was studying for the MCAT in the lab and doing practice questions. And my coworkers were like, you are crazy, you need to calm down, slow down, and I was not going to slow down. That Failure drove me, it made my 
motivation and my perseverance, my determination just fly up, guys. I was determined to get into medical school. So then I got a really awesome job working as a community health worker in the pediatric ER full time during this time. So then I transitioned into that job and it was I couldn't study at work at all with that. I was constantly seeing families helping moms and their kids, dads and their kids. It was, it's an, it was an awesome experience being down in the PDR. I got to see everything the doctors were doing, all the RSV that was going on, all the colds, um, a lot of child abuse unfortunately. But it was a great experience, great job. And I retook the MCAT and I improved. I barely missed my goal, but I improved, which is what counts. So I went back to the drawing board with my personal statement. I rewrote my personal statement like eight times. My pre-med advisor shredded it every single time. And then like the last three, he's like, wow, this is pretty good. Like you need to revise this and that. And then I got my final copy and I reapplied to medical school and here I am. I want you guys to know that if you guys do get rejected this cycle, it's not the end of the world. You guys have time to improve your application and reapply. Make sure you improve whatever. If you get if you get an exit interview, make sure to improve whatever they tell you. If it's your GPA, your MCAT, or extracurriculars, work on it because if you reapply to the same school, they're going to see, look, we didn't accept you because of this. We didn't accept you because your GPA was low you didn't improve your GPA uh, am I a joke to you? <laughs> like that meme um, so definitely improve your application, work on it and thank you guys so much for watching make sure to subscribe if you haven't like, leave a comment below and I hope you guys found this video informational, hopeful <laughs> and entertaining at the same time thank you guys so much I'll see you guys in the next video bye